It's fast, it's loud, and it's all American. Just how we like it. Factory 5 Racing is one of the most famous kid car brands of the modern era. They sell DIY project cars that can be assembled in your own garage. If you want high speeds and low cost, then Dave Smith is your guy. Smith and F5 are behind some of the most beloved replicas of the modern era. But beyond all their muscle cars and mid-engine coupes is the ultimate freedom machine. An affordable, Corvette-powered, Ferrari-crushing, gasoline-burning, bald eagle ballistic missile flagship supercar. The Factory 5 GTM. Oh my God. This is the poster car for DIY supercar slayers. It belongs on a list of the most American things ever made, next to Harley Davidson and maybe the double quarter pounder meal. The long, low proportions are reminiscent of a 4 GT. It's unmistakably mid-engined, muscly, and performance-oriented. When you buy a GTM kit from Factory 5, it arrives in pieces. For 25 grand, you're given a crate filled to the brim with the fiberglass body shell, pre-welded CAD design space frame chassis, suspension kit with Coney shocks and coilovers, a manual steering rack setup, Willwood pedal box and brakes, an upgraded cooling system, and some of the other various trims and trappings you need to build a car. It's like unboxing a massive Lego set, except it will take you 600 hours to build and it'll go 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds when you're finished. What's not included in the kit is a drivetrain. This is basically all the parts that make the GTM go. The engine, computer, and transmission. And here is where you'll really have a lot of space to experiment and make the build your own. Factory 5 recommends using a C5 Corvette donor car to sacrifice its internals to the project. That means most GTMs will be propelled by either the base 5.7 liter LS1 V8 or the upgraded LS6 that came in the Z06. F5 says the LS7 featured in C6 models will also fit, which makes over 500 horsepower stock. But you're not gonna leave it stock, are you? Some cars have been built out to 850 horsepower, which is, frankly, that's too much. Nobody needs that much power in a car. Oh, and I'm pretty sure every GTM ever built has a manual transmission. There's the recommended Porsche G50 transaxle, or something aftermarket like a Mendiola will also work. And for being a DIY kit car, the GTM is surprisingly well fitted. Of course, the exterior has all the fully functional lights and signals you need to get it registered in most places, but the interior can be pretty comfortable as well. The kit includes a custom 200 mile per hour gauge set with a carbon fiber housing pod. It also has a custom embossed steering wheel, titanium shift knob, and aluminum sill plates. Not to mention it has standard power windows and an optional AC system that was designed specifically for this car. If you aren't impressed by that, well, you probably just haven't seen enough homemade cars. This is some top-notch stuff for a component car. By the way, does anyone actually know if there's a functional difference in the terms kit car and component car? I've had some commenters complain that it's correlated to how many parts are borrowed from the donor vehicle, but I've always just used the words interchangeably. Let me know in the comments how you use it. But what I'm sure everyone is wondering most is how much this component kit will have cost when it's fully assembled. As you've probably already seen from the thumbnail, the kit itself only costs $24,990. But when you add in all the donor drivetrain bits, the paint, and what have you hidden assembly fees, you'll end up spending a bit more than that. Factory 5 says that when the model was introduced, they hoped enthusiasts would be able to build a GTM for around $35,000 to $50,000. 
I expect that number may have gone up a bit with inflation, but it should still be far less expensive than a new C8. And if you don't want to build one yourself, used GTMs can sell for about 70 grand to, wait, what the hell? $180,000? Twin 62 millimeter turbos with 1000H? Does, does that mean horsepower? Gee. Um, well, the evaluation, I, I drove the car. The extra horsepower definitely makes a huge difference. It's, it went from insane fast to a little bit too fast, maybe. Since it was introduced to the Factory 5 lineup in 2005, the GTM has built one of the most respectable reputations of any kit car the world has seen. When the Massachusetts-based brand was founded 10 years earlier, kit cars were still seen as cheap ripoffs or performance car wannabes. <laughs> Most builds were heaped together out of shoddy fiberglass, plastic, nails, and grandma's rusty old Fiero. The GTM and Factory 5's Cobra replicas were really at the forefront of the component car industry, setting the standards for cheap supercars of that decade. Over the years, the GTM has seen continued success, but the platform is definitely starting to show its age. And that's where this video gets a little sad, because you're already too late. The last GTM has been sold. Factory 5 states on their website that production spots for 2022 have already been filled, and they're not currently taking any new orders. After more than 17 years of supercar slaying, the GTM is finally being retired. But don't be too gloomy, its replacement might be even more impressive. See, the geniuses over at F5 have been cooking up a new carbon fiber V12 to fill this spot in their lineup. It's called the F9R, and it's practically rewriting the rulebook on how to go fast on a budget. You can learn more about it by watching the playlist linked on screen now, and uh, maybe drop a subscribe while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.